Donaldson. Number 30, Braxton Lewis. No, he's going to take it himself for a championship. Oh. A double play and wins it for three. Turn it to the end zone. What a catch. The guy is on touchdown. And now the starting lineup for the Effingham Flaming Hearts. Leading off the shortstop, number one, Jack Harper. Batting second, the left fielder, number nine, Caden Coberlin. Batting third, the second baseman, number 35, Camden Raddus. Hitting clean up the center fielder, number two, Quest Hull. Batting fifth, the left fielder, the catcher, I beg your pardon, number seven, Miles Maxilden. Batting sixth, the first baseman, number 21, Colton Webb. Batting seventh, the third baseman, number three, Evan Weymouth. Batting eighth, the center fielder, number 42, Spencer Fox. And batting ninth, the pitcher, number 41, Kaden Nichols. Now let's meet the home team for our first game, the Rams of Grayson Central. Let us meet the head coach of Grays Lake Central, Troy Whalen, with a 20-year record of 493 wins and 249 losses. Grays Lake Central enters this game today. with a record of 32 wins and seven losses. Let's now meet the assistant coaches. Troy Titchy. Bill Schufreiter. AJ Ford. Matt Formica. And Schrader, Glenn Curtis. And now the starting lineup for Grace Lake Central. Leading off, the left fielder, number 17, Jack Gervasi. Beg your pardon on that. Let's get the other players in as well. The Grace Lake Central players, number two, Ralph DeLeon. Number five, Jerry Miller. Number six, Johnny Restrepo. Number seven, Jordan Dumas. Number nine, Cam Marson. Number 12, Garrett Gunther. Number 13, Nolan Mousse. Number 15, Adam or back and forth. Number 16, Colin Cornett. Number 20, Caden Woods. Number 22, Fikrit Dormus. Number 24, 23, that is Jacob Rand. Number 25, Carter Behoff. 
Number 26, Brendan Kirchner. Number 27, Max Mataki. Number 29, Zach Antonucci. Number 33, Sam Puri. Number 34, Cal Hansen. Number 35, Jaden Dumas. Number 45, Max Wall. Now let me give you the starting lineup for Grace Lake Central. The leadoff hitter is number 17, the left fielder, Jack Kerbasi. Batting second, the center fielder, number 11, Luke Mudd. Batting third, the right fielder, number 15, Adam Fitzgerald. Batting cleanup, the first baseman, number 19, Chris Rogers. Batting fifth, the third baseman, number four, Riley Pullett. Batting sixth, the second baseman, number 12, Garrett Gunther. Batting seventh, the designated hitter, number 13, Nolan Massey. Batting eighth, the shortstop, number three, Sam Cooper. Batting ninth, the catcher, number zero, Parker Greenfield. And the pitcher, number one, Will Schuprider. The umpires for your first game today at the plate, Ryan Berber. At first base, Adam Satorius. And third base, Mike Wise. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise for Peyton Frazier, a junior from Joliet West, performing our national anthem. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Joliet, Illinois, and welcome to the IHSA 2023 Class 3A semifinals. First matchup today matches the Effingham Flaming Hearts, 22 and 15 on the season. They'll take on the 32 and 7 Rays Lake Central Rams. Hi, everybody. Dave Bernhardt, along with Hall of Fame coach Mark Lindo, and for these two teams, well, it's been a while since they've been here. First of all, for Rays Lake Central, last time they made an appearance. The state finals was 2014 for Effingham. 
you have to go back a long way. How about 81 years ago, only the second appearance ever for Effingham and Mark, yet you say all of that, whoever wins this ball game is going to pick themselves up either a first or second place trophy. Hey, good morning, Dave. Excited for this weekend's oh, baseball. Good job. Got two excellent baseball teams here today. And you're right, it's going to come down to execution. It's going to come down to pitching and defense, and then some timely hitting. Someone will be playing in the title game Saturday afternoon. Effingham at 22 and 15. They will bat first by virtue of a coin flip last night. This is how they'll go with their lineup. Jack Harper, the shortstop, to lead things off, followed by Caden Coberline and Cameron Raddix. Quest Hull hits in that cleanup spot in center field. Miles Maxed in behind the plate, Colton Webb. It's over at first base. Bottom three in the order, third baseman Devin Weymouth. Right fielder Spencer Fox. And doing the pitching will be Caden Nichols. They're under head coach Curran McNeely in his third season. 50 wins and 40 defeats. Defensively for Grays Lake Central will be Jack Gerbasi in left, Luke Mudd in center. Adam Fitzgerald is in right. The left side of the infield is Riley Pollock and Sam Cooper. The right side, second base Garrett Gunther and Chris Rogers. Parker Greenfield behind the plate. And for Grace Lake Central, they will go with Will Schufreiter on the mound. Okay, we'll take a look at the senior, 6'1", 155 pounds. Comes in with an 8-2 record on the season for the Rams. 51 innings pitched for Schufreiter, 1.92 earned run average. He's punched out 63 opposing batters and walked just 18. He won the sexual championship. The last Saturday on his 18th birthday. A week later, he's pitching in the state semifinals. So quite a week for that young man. We're ready for 3A semifinal baseball in downtown Joliet. And to call the first pitch and to call the entire weekend of the state finals, my partner, the Hall of Fame voice of the Little High School Association, here's Dave Bernhard. Well, thank you very much, Mark. And indeed, as you said, game number one here, Grays Lake Central in Effingham. Second game, semifinal final in 3A will match the defending state champ. Nazareth Academy one, taking on Sycamore, and then later today in 4A, defending 4A champ Edwardsville takes on York. It'll be Brother Rice Nutrier to wrap things up. Leading off for Effingham will be Jack Harper. Harper leads his team with a 417 batting average. Going to go after that first pitch and roll it out to Chris Rogers, playing on the turf here at Dooley Health and Care Field, and that's one pitch, one out. First ball, he looking fastball. He got a breaking ball down in on his hands. Got on top of it, rolled it over just a little bit. Easy play for Rodgers. One pitch, one out, and efficient. Stepping in now is Caden Koberlein, the left fielder, Koberlein. Looking for the first pitch from Schufreiter. That's a little low. Our umpires today, Ryan Verver, Adam Satorius, and Mike Wise. Verver behind the plate, Satorius at first. And Wise over at third. This one sliced out of play to the right side up on the berm, which usually we sit here and we see their nice green berm. Well, obviously a lack of rain here in Illinois here in recent weeks. It is brown. And no activity on the berm yet with the youngsters chasing foul balls down either line. They'll be here, though, in full force. Cover line takes that pitch for a strike. Six foot, 180 pound sophomore, 264 average on the season, hitting in the two spot for head coach Curran McNeely. Schufreiter working from the stretch position. Big breaking ball, Coverline will go down swinging. That one had tremendous downward bite. Vertically, it had to have gone down eight to 10 inches with late break. Coverline made a good pass to the baseball, but just an outstandingly Number executed pitch. Two gone to Camden Raditz. Raditz a 286 hitter for Effingham. By virtue of reaching this game, he says the first time in 81 years, this will be only the second team trophy in Effingham High School history. And you have to go all the way back to a name that'll be familiar to uh, a lot of folks. It's a second place trophy in basketball, but he stood seven feet, two inches and a quarter. Uwe Blob, everybody remembers that name when he transferred in from Germany and Jim Maxson was the coach for Effingham, the Flaming Hearts back then. And that was quite a basketball team, of course. Uwe Blob went on to play at Indiana. 
And ironically, Effingham's athletic director, David Waltman, was a member of that team. Now he's come full force to bring home a trophy here this weekend. Two strikes to Redis. Chopper, second baseman Gunther can't come up with it. And that will be an error on Garrett Gunther. I think what Gunther did there, he played that to his glove side, and he tried that to run through that baseball and hand. didn't need to. He would have the plenty of time. Two, he tried to run West through and make a faster ball. play than at all necessary, and a two-out error sets the table for the cleanup hitter, Hall. Yep, Quest Hall, the center fielder. 6'1", senior. Five home runs on the season. 3.27 down the right field line. Down the left field line, it's a poke to get it out of here. 3.48 directly down that line. If you want one to center field, you're going to have to hit it 400 feet with elevation. High center field wall with that hitter's eye in the background. Flag blowing softly out toward left center field. Took a little off, ran it away from Hull. Yeah, straight change right there. Hull got way out in front of that pitch. He loves the changeup. That is his go-to pitch. Gets his thumb underneath the baseball experiment with all pitchers. Like some different groups, when you find one you like, you go to it. And he'll get his second strike out of the inning as Hull goes down swinging. So there was one error in the inning. That's the only base runner. We'll go to the bottom of the first inning. Grays Lake Central. 32 and 7 in the season, they'll come to the plate. Hey, conductor, how about something new? You played this last year. Come on, get your head out of your sacks. Shh, we're trying to hear. Well, I'm sick and tired of hearing your kid play the wrong notes. Where's my kid solo? At least you can see your kid. Why is my kid stuck way in the back? The conductor only plays his favorite. Move! I can't hurt that solo! You say I did it? Yeah, Come on! This NFHS Network Championship event is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Rays Lake Central will come to the plate. Leading it off will be Jack Gerbasi. Gerbasi, the left fielder, followed by Luke Mudd in center, and Adam Fitzgerald in right. So your three outfielders hit one, two, three. Chris Rogers hits in a cleanup spot. It'll be a third baseman, Riley Pollock, batting fifth. Garrett Gunther, second baseman, is sixth. Nolan Mousset today is a designated hitter, and he is batting for Will Schufreiter. Lineup rounded off by the shortstop, Sam Cooper, and the catcher, Parker Greenfield. Defensively for Effingham, it'll be... Caden Coberline in left, Quest Hall in center, and Spencer Fox, the right fielder. At third base, Evan Weymouth, shortstop Jack Harper, Camden Raditz at second, Colton Webb is over at first. Behind the plate is Miles Maxiden, and Caden Nichols, the lefty, will get the ball here in the semi. They, uh, Caden Nichols, just a junior, 5'9", 160. So not a big stature, but he can get it done on the hill. 58 innings pitched, 3.02 earned run average on the season and a really good strikeout to walk ratio. Now this is 68 to 33, so two to one strikeout to walk ratio for him. Very solid for the left-handed southpaw pitcher. I mentioned Evan Weymouth, the third baseman. Well, those will be his duties here in the bottom half of the first inning, but Evan has duties prior to this game starting. Yeah, Evan started the ball game or before the ball game with a pregame speech. He fires his team up every time. And he's gotten to the point where it's an expected thing, and he prepares for it to get his team a little bit of juice, and they're juiced right now on pitch number one. And pitch number one will hit Jack Gerbasi. Slow curveball. Gerbasi's down, and that is not part of the game plan for Caden Nichols. Well, Gerbasi held his ground, took the hit by pitch right there, and he scored 52 runs on the year. So the table is already set with the leadoff man on. I'll bring up Luke Mudd, the center fielder. 354 average, good lead for Gerbasi. Well, a little bit of run to the outside. Look to be a change right there. Gerbasi at first base, 25 of 25 in stolen bases this year. 
Stretches it just a bit with the lefty Nichols on the mound. Mud down the right field line, twisting, twisting, making the catch deep in the corner is Spencer Fox. Right up against the wall, deep in the right field corner, outstanding play from Fox. He went far to the corner, was run out of real estate, felt, I guess you cannot feel the turf change on the warning track area, but made that catch, and Gerbasi as good and a cerebral player as he is, once he knew that ball was foul, probably should have tagged immediately and been to second base. Instead, he had to go back to tag up and was held at first. Number three hitter, the right fielder, Adam Fitzgerald, steps to the plate. Gerbasi, a little bit of a flinch. He gets back safely in the pickoff attempt from the lefty. Gerbasi carries a lucky tube of chapstick in his back pocket. So that's kind of one of his baseball superstitions. Don't know what happens when he slides on that back pocket. That can't feel good. <laughs> Adam Fitzgerald, 344 average. This is a team that can swing the bats. This ball's hit hard up the middle line drive. One hops to center fielder, Quest Hall, and the Rams from Grays Lake Central. Runners first and second and one out. Well, Troy Ryland's team, you said they could swing the bats. You cannot have more depth and cannot be more exemplified than every single batter in lineup comes in over 300. So there's not a soft spot to look at when you are facing Troy Ryland's Rams lineup. Whalen, 493 victories in his 20th season as a head coach for the Rams. Very personable person, very helpful to us, the different times we've met him, and has established a great baseball program. Played his college ball at UIC, and All-Stater is a player at Streeter Woodland High School. And a member of the 2019 class of the Illinois High School Baseball Coaches Association Hall of Fame. Cleanup hitter Chris Rogers. Nichols in some early trouble here. A hit batter and a single up the middle. Rogers, a team leading 31 runs batted in. He has eight doubles on the season. That also tops the Rams. Grays Lake Central got here by virtue of a super sectional win, 2-1 to one over Fenwick after defeating Crystal Lake South and Lake Forest, respectively 4-3 and a 10 nothing win over Lake Forest in the sectional. And you mentioned that Fenwick win 2-1. Chris Rogers, the person you see stepping back into the batter's box, had both RBIs in that game. And the table is set for him right now. Rogers headed to Lindenwood University. That ball will jump off his bat. Look at the hole on the right side. Second baseman Raditz. Holding the runner on, still a huge hole as Raditz shades towards second. They try to pick off behind a Jack Harper. So that was a set play as we were describing it. They had the second baseman, so he thought, okay, Gerbasi's going to leave when the second baseman Raditz leaves, and they had to pick off back to the shortstop. Good set play, but good base running by Gerbasi. Rogers waits and will pull it foul just past the third base dugout. That's where Grays Lake Central lies. And you know, it's a tough tough look here. I'm not sure exactly how you have your uh, watching device, your viewing device tuned, but Grays Lake Central wearing green camouflage uniforms. So with the green uniforms camouflage on this green artificial turf, just kind of watch for the gray pants moving around the bases. Nichols delivers. Good fastball fouled back into the screen. Well, that one did have a little bit of extra giddy up. Probably put another two inches on that fastball. Good job by Rogers in this battle. Nichols has him in swing mode right now. He could probably throw one out of the zone and see he'll, if he'll get the first baseman to chase here. Still that big hole on the right side. Now we'll even count at two and two with one out. And there he did go out of the zone, but you want to you want to make it hittable. You want to make it. Uh, so the, the batter will chase rather than to be that far out of the zone. Left fielder Coberline playing very deep. He just threw a hard high. Now he can go slow low down his back foot. 
Didn't get it quite down, but this will get up in the air to the second baseman, Radix. For the second out of the inning. Yeah, that's kind of a mistake in the zone. That was a breaking ball about waist high. And Rodgers just couldn't get through the base, get on top of the baseball. Got her knee, dropped his backside just a bit and popped that up. So Nichols went out away from getting out of this. He'll have to get past the third baseman, Riley Pollock, hitting in the fifth spot of the order. Shortstop Harper's continuing to hold the runner at second after Bossy. West Hull in center field, their best athlete in the outfield and their best arm in the outfield. Playing pretty deep. I don't think he'd be able to throw out Jabasi from there. On a base hit to center. This one's going to go to right. Dropping quickly and down. Gets past the right fielder Fox. That will enable not only a run to score, but Fitzgerald to go from first to third. One to nothing. Raise Lake Central. Big two out base hit right there by Pollock as he took that ball on the outer third and went with it that way. Spencer Fox overran the play and really good defense by the speedy Quest Hall to get behind him and back that up and save the second run from scoring at least for now. Effingham is not out of it yet, runners second and third. Second baseman Garrett Gunther for the Rams at the plate. Miles Maxson, the catcher, has to go up and away to snag that one. Okay, Nichols needs to regroup, get that deep breath as we talk about, settle himself down and make quality pitches. He tried to put a little bit something extra on that one and was erratic out of the zone. His arm really trailed. Gunther tied with Chris Rogers leading his team and runs batted in at 31 on the season. He bats with two outs. This one is fouled onto the berm. Out of play to the right field side. Well, you can see the game plan by Grays Lake Central. They have fouled off, what, four or five balls to the right side? So they are really intent on hitting the ball where it's pitched the other way, staying close as long as you can. Gun through a 340 banning average. That one almost hit his back foot. Remember, Jack Gerbasi, he was hit to start this game, and that's the only run on the board thus far. Two-one pitch coming up to Gunther. And that's going to keep the bases. Runners have to go back. That hit the second hit batter of this inning. And that will load the bases. So even though the runner at third, Adam Fitzgerald, got a good break on that, the second hit batter really puts Nichols in a jam. So we are only an inning and then two outs this a half inning and then two outs this bottom of the inning into this baseball game, but this becomes a critical at bat already because if you hold them to one run in your Effingham, you're in good shape. But a big base hit by Grays Lake Central, and they will grab a huge bit of momentum early on in this baseball game, trying to take advantage of two hit by pitch. The designated hitter Nolan Mousset will come to the plate. He has a 412 average and 51 at bats this season. There is no let up one through nine. Two hits, two hit batters. A run is in. Kerr McNeely, coach of Effingham. Murray State grad. At Effingham won the Milliken Super Sectional, defeating Champaign Central 4-3. Easy wins in the sectional against Triad and Mount Vernon by scores of 9-2 and 6-3. Who say the number seven hitter? The base is loaded, short lead at each base. He too is looking to go opposite way, a little bit behind that pitch, ran away from him. The base is loaded, and Colton Webb is holding the runner on first base, which leaves a big gap on that side. Because the second baseman Raditz is shaded towards the bag as well. But just like that, Nichols gets on top, no balls and two strikes. Now Webb is backed off of holding him at first. I think he got a little help from the bench there. 
Or you. Yeah. <laughs> He's got the earpiece in. Yep. Nichols waits and waits. Here it is. Got him. How about that for Caden Nichols to get out of it? One run across the plate. Three left on the bases after one here in your first Class 3A semifinal. Grays Lake Central, the one to nothing lead. This NFHS Network Championship event is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Back in Joliet as Grays Lake Central strikes first. They wish they could have gotten a little more, but pitcher Will Schufreiter staked to that one and nothing lead. He had four men come to the plate. One reached on there. It'll be Miles Maxiden, Colton Webb, and Evan Weymouth for Effingham. The Flaming Hearts. And Mark, the Flaming Hearts, you know, a lot of folks, you know, have all into the nicknames in Illinois, but the origin nicknames are fascinating. So the Flaming Heart logo for uh, Effingham. That was a product of a famous speech by President Harry Truman. Truman said, quote, the successful man has enthusiasm. Good work is never done in cold blood. Heat is needed to form everything. Every great achievement is the product of a flaming heart. Yeah, and the rest, they say, in Effingham is history. You know, they've come close to other state tournaments, but just have not gone over a hump. Just a couple years ago, they lost to Waterloo in the super sexual in baseball of 2019. So they finally got over the proverbial hump and will, no matter what, take a trophy home this weekend. And actually, just in the last few years, girls basketball twice reached the super sectionals. This one just turns foul at the last minute down the third baseline for Miles Maxiden. Good umpire mechanics, Ryan Verver, the home plate umpire, is the one that called foul ball. That's his call for 90 feet. Once the ball goes past third base, Mike Wise would then make a decision on any foul ball past the third base base. Max it in a 269 batting average as Schufreiter delivers right there in the outside corner. So the contrast in offensive production, we mentioned everybody in the Grays like Central lineup right there at 300 or above. On the other side, only two hitters for Effingham with 300 averages. This is lined to the left fielder, diving catch. Coming up with it is Gerbasi. Oh my, did he cover some ground. Laid out for it. Gerbasi with a web gem. You cue that one up. That will be in their postseason highlights as he saved a for sure triple. Maybe we would have seen it inside the Parker. Just a great, great catch. Timed his leap to his left center field at the last second laid out and made a great one. Maxiden really barreled that one up, yet just one out is all Effingham can look at on the scoreboard. Colton Webb, sub 200 hitter batting average wise, he is the first baseman for Effingham. And that becomes even more important because of course Maxiden was leading off that inning and you get your leadoff man double, triple, you're in business, but no. It's been an up and down year here for Effingham. Obviously the up is happening right now. Flaming Hearts started the season, dropped their first three and were just five and nine after 14 games. And then the midseason won, won 10 out of 12 and coming down the stretch before the playoffs, won just two out of six games. And Kerr McNeely, he credits offensively, has picked up a little bit. They've become much more disciplined at the plate and that's helped ignite their offense just a bit more because they're not a team that's going to drive the ball into the gaps as a ball club. 
Ball hit on the nose, the one hopper to Gunther. Two gone. Gunther had to go, what, two or three steps to his left. Had plenty of time to measure that throw, but two balls scored up back to back by Maxson leading things off, and then Webb with that 4 3, but hit right on the screws. Evan Weymouth will step in now, hits out of the seventh spot. Goes after the first one. Gunther behind the bag, throwing on the run. Got him, oh my. Garrett Gunther had an easy one hopper and then he makes big time play behind the bag. A one, two, three inning. The Grays Lake Central will come to the dugout and come to the plate with a one to nothing lead. Very comfortable 71 degrees here in Joliet. A lot of green to our left. That would be the Grays Lake Central side. In fact, some gold as well as youth league players from Grays Lake right behind their dugout for the high school Rams. On the other side, the red belongs to Effingham. Folks coming up about a three hour journey to Joliet. And they see their team down one to nothing. It will be 8-9-1 for Grays Lake Central. Cooper, Greenfield, and Gerbasi. Trabassi scoring the only run of this game. Well, Troy Royland's team got one run in the first inning, but I tell you what, their defense in the second inning probably saved a couple runs, no doubt about that. Troy Royland began this program in 20, 2002, and he's built a really nice foundation. First pitch from Caden Nichols. Nicks that inside corner. Well, Troy Whalen says what an honor it is to coach in the Grays Lake community. It is a baseball community. They've gotten behind their team. They've gotten here to Joliet. This one's popped up behind second base. Retreating, retreating, and finally the center fielder, Quest Hull, will make the catch. Raditz was with it all the way. Hull, I'm not sure if he actually called him off or he just snatched it away from Raditz. In either case, one out. I thought lack of communication might cause that ball to fall in the Bermuda Triangle, three players, Harper at short, Raditz at second, pull in center, all going at that baseball. Parker Greenfield, the number nine hitter, is the only player not hitting 300 today. He's a 293 coming into this one. Outfield playing straight away for Greenfield. Good job by Nichols. He pounded the outside but missed. So he comes back, makes an adjustment, gets that ball right in the hands for a strike. This one, short right field. And the second out of the inning as Spencer Fox will make the grab. Go back to the top to Jack Jabasi. Jabasi saw one pitch. He saw it hit his now foot, and he scored the only run as he came in on a single. Riley Pollock. Gerbasi has now scored 53 runs on the season. That's a leadoff man that you want. <laughs> Four triples, three home runs for the leadoff hitter. 
Well, you can see, you mentioned it earlier, Mark, the everything looking to go to right field against mm -hmm. the lefty, and you can just see the waiting, waiting, yeah. waiting, and the, the definite approach coming into this one. Letting the ball get deep, well-schooled, well-prepared. Grays Lake has six players around the super sectional basketball team that lost to St. Ignatius. They got to the Supers, could not get to Champagne, but they found a way to Joliet. 2-1 pitch, Jabasi. now it's 3-1. and one. Well, and that explains partially why Grays Lake Central started this season 2-3, and three, because your basketball players play deep into the postseason, and then you have to get back into the whole baseball rhythm. Well, after that 2-3 and three stretch, and they are in danger of actually going 2-4, and four, defeating University High School from Chicago, but after that, the Rams ripped off 20 straight victories. Yeah, they were unbeaten in April after that March st start, two and three, unbeaten the whole month of April. Gerbasi officially zero for zero today, hit by a pitch and has walked. Now this is a great time for Gerbasi to run, as we said, 25 of 25 in stolen bases with Luke Mudd at the plate. Now Nichols already has shown a pretty good move to first, so Gerbasi has a decision to make. Does he try to read the leg, or does he just go on first movement? And stay right there in the first pitch. Again, second baseman Raditz shaded towards second base, as is shortstop Jack Harper. There he goes. The throw a little bit high. The tag is down. Max it in a little bit high. Snap tag down, and that is the first time that Gerbasi has been caught stealing. Miles Maxigan, Maxiden doing the honors. So Grays Lake Central comes up scoreless in the inning. We'll go to the second, one nothing Rams. Academy Sports and Outdoors has something for everyone in your family. From top sports brands, to backyard cooking, or the best in the outdoors, the North Face, Yeti, Columbia, or Magellan Outdoors, Academy has it all. Whether you're celebrating familiar traditions or exploring new ones, we've got what you need in here to have fun out there. Start your next adventure and make lifelong family memories at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Download our app or shop at academy.com. Effingham will get a shot here to do something against Will Schroofreiter. The only base runner they've had has been reached on an air, and they'll do it with eight, nine, and one. Spencer Fox, Caden Nichols back to the top of the order, and Jack Harper. Fox wearing a white 42 on that red jersey, the right fielder. Looking to bunt his way on, straight back on a foul ball attempt. Dropped that back foot, got the barrel out. I think he was trying to push that ball rather than drag it. He was trying to push that ball at Gunther towards second base. Gunther playing very deep on that side of the field. Of course, a turf field here. Curve bump, snagged by Rogers. One up, one down. Heard that. Heard that noise on our crowd mic from the Grays Lake Central Dugout, stay down. I know we used to make our team yell that way. Everybody in the dugout had to yell, stay down. And invariably, somebody would come up and there would be an error underneath the wickets. <laughs> Kane Nichols is in the ninth spot. He's doing the pitching here today. Left-handed pitcher, left-handed batter. Nobody on Dave Bernhardt or Jim Hall's team ever made an error defensively, right? So well coached those teams. Just can't recall <laughs> that ever happened. I know with Jim Hall's teams, they never did. 20 some years of coaching. That's quite a record for Jimmy. Fouled away. Oh, 
One ball, one strike, one out to Nichols. 227 average, bats against Schufreiter and swings and misses at that one. Well, how about we go back to Peoria last weekend. We had two perfect baseball days. We got a perfect baseball morning and day expected today. Got to love the game. Looking for that outside corner, didn't get the call. Try to go back door breaking ball. Outfield is shallowed it up a little bit here on Nichols, and this will head down the left field side. Gerbasi in foul territory. Will come away with it for the second out. Well, we've seen Gerbasi make a diving catch in left center field. Now we see him make a catch in foul territory down the really left field line. And he can run, and we'll go back to, to the top of that inning where he had his 27th stolen or 26th stolen base attempt negated by the throwing arm right there. Great, great by Maxton. The first time he was thrown out all year with that speed. Jack Harper bounced out to first base in the first inning. Schufreiter has a nice, easy motion, works from a stretch, left side of the rubber, the first base side. We'll go to Southwestern Community College next year. Straight over the top, inside out swing, it'll just bound down that left field foul area in the bullpen. Harper holds his hands pretty high, up right above his armpit. Wants to drop the barrel right over the baseball. Roll this one out to the second baseman, Gunther. And another one, two, three inning. Seven straight retired by Will Schufreiter. Through two and a half. One nothing lead, Grace Lake Central. Okay, fans, turn your attention to the field for the Chick-fil-A. Oh, the innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in, how to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 12 million participants in America who take part in high school sports or activities. Bernhard, Mark Lindo with you here from Dooley Health and Care Field. It's the last 3A semifinals, one game of four overall here today. We'll have 4A semifinals coming up a little bit later. Reminding you that you're watching live coverage of the IHSA Baseball Championships right here on the NFHS Network. NFHSnetwork.com slash IHSA is your destination for the most comprehensive coverage of Illinois high school playoff action. Hey, how about Effingham? We talked about they're going to take home a, a trophy for the second time in school history, the basketball team, coached by Jim Maxson and led by Uwe Blob earlier. But they started the season 0-3. And throughout the season, Dave, they had not one, not two, but three different three-game losing streaks. So I'm not real good at math like you are, but that's nine games they lost in a matter of a few days each. And yet they find themselves here in Joliet playing ball Great ball at the right time of the season. At the plate is Luke Mudd. He was there when Jabasi was caught stealing. Well, that was the turning point of the season, according to head coach Curran McNeely. He said, when we finally got to 500, yeah. and he said, I knew we had the team that could do it, but when we finally got to 500, this team started believing, and then, of course, just kind of pushed in here through the playoffs to reach the state semifinals. One-two pitch. Nearly went. They will ask about it, but nope, held up. 2-2. Two -two. So Nichols, who's hit a couple of batters, was able to find it on that particular curveball. Didn't hit his batter, but it was maybe the best breaking ball he's thrown today. Mud to be followed by Fitzgerald and Rogers.
Both pitchers working rapidly, quickly, and with rhythm. They want to get it and go. That really helps your defense. Curveball misses up and away. Count goes full. Another dangerous man to put on base in Luke Mudd. He has 16 stolen bases this year, and he can fly. Let's run a 6-8-60. That is getting it done. Put, picking him up, putting him down. 3-2 pitch. And he will be on. The leadoff batter reaches here in the top of the third. Really good at bat. Taking a couple borderline pitches. Fitzgerald popped out to the second baseman Raditz his last time up. Nichols has walked the last two batters he's faced. First two hitters in this Rams order. Long look down to third base for Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald, I should say, singled his last time up. Chris Rogers on deck. He popped out to the second baseman. And this one will fly over the second level here at Dooley Health and Care Field. Troy Whalen says that Fitzgerald handles a bat better than anyone on the team. So if you want to put somebody in motion, little hit and run or run and hit, this would be a man you could do it with. And this one skips through Maxiden. That will allow Mudd to head to second. Scoring position, nobody out, and a 2-1 count to Fitzgerald. Again, both middle infielders trying to hold the runner close. Cameron Raddatz, we've mentioned, or Camden Raddatz, we've mentioned, has been really pinching that second base bag. That's not just when a runner is on, but it's exacerbated here. And there is still that big hole on the right side, but count now goes to 3-1. and one. Timeout call by Jack Harper, one of the leaders of their team, trying to settle down his junior pitcher. Maybe talk about a pickoff play, but I don't know if you get Mud to be asleep here. He'll be very careful with no one out. Yeah, there have not been very aggressive leads, and now we get some activity headed down to the Effingham bullpen here in the third inning. Coming up straight over the top. And runners first and second. Now that's three straight walks dating back to last inning for Nichols. Brings up Chris Rogers. Not really the man you would want to face if you were Effingham. Rogers, 31 runs batted in, a 353 average. He has 11 extra bases, eight of them doubles. A look to second, and now to Rogers. He'll look at it all the way for a strike. Warming up in the Effingham bullpen is number 23, Andrew Donaldson. Now it says 23, Donaldson, but it says he's a right-handed pitcher. Well, he's throwing left-handed. <laughs> so either the number's wrong or the right or left is wrong in their roster. We're going to assume that's 23, Donaldson, down the right field line. Once again, the delivery to Rodgers. This one is in the air to right field. Fox moves in, tagging at both bases, and nobody's going anywhere. One out. When Mudd advanced from first to second on that ball back to the screen, it was officially ruled a wild pitch. So that's a wild pitch to second, and then the base on balls. Grays Lake Central in a scoring threat once again. Riley Pollock singled in the lone run of the game in the first inning, driving home Gerbasi. Fifth spot in the order for the Grays Lake Central Rams.
Once again, the right field. This is going to be in foul territory and out of play. Spencer Fox has been a busy guy out there in right field for the Flaming Hearts. The Rams at Grays Lake Central continuing to try to pepper the ball to the right side. And you continue to stay with your game plan and you believe in what you're preached to do, you're going to find some success there. Chopper, Nickel snags it, and he'll get that force at third. Nice job by Caden Nichols. Good thing he's left handed. That would that took him right to the ball, took him right to the bag for the second out of the inning. Can he work out of another jam here? Really a cerebral play because you always teach your pitchers we want to go one, six, three double play, but he had so much momentum on that slowly chopped ball to the left side. He got the lead batter because he was not going to get a double play. Anywho. Now it's up to Garrett Gunther. He called back in the first inning. After a run across the plate, Nichols able to get out of the jam with a strikeout, leaving the bases loaded. He's right there again. Gunther was hit by a pitch. Now they'll pick off. That was just to keep the runner at second, Fitzgerald aware. Gunther will play ball at Central College in Pella, Iowa next year after he takes a medallion home this weekend. This is ripped to left field. Gets down into left center. Scoring easily will be Fitzgerald. Waving Pollock. Here's the relay throw. He's in there. Garrett Gunston, a two RBI double. Grays Lake Central with a three to nothing lead. Boy, he laced that ball. What a great job by Quest Hull in center field. Cutting that ball off and it ended up with a bang bang play, a home plate after the relay. But Troy Whalen with two outs, staying incredibly aggressive and was waving demonstratively the whole way, running home and two out, two RBI base hit and some separation right now for the Rams. Nichols was able to get out of it in the first inning. Gunther spoiled that thought here in the third. The runner still in scoring, scoring position. Designated hitter Nolan Mousset at the plate. One of the few times we've seen Grays Lake Central go to the left side. And it results in two runs. Grays Lake Central 32 and seven. You mentioned that on the open, but they have 92 wins the last three years. So quite a run for that baseball program that has been here three previous times. The inning started with a pair of walks. Double by Gunther, the only hit of the inning, and it was a big one. So basically the base on ball scored. I mm -hmm. realized one was wiped out, and the hit batsman the first inning, so three runs have basically scored because of hit by pitch, two base on balls. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Time of possession in this game has belonged to Grays Lake Central. It's been quick innings when Effingham's been at the plate. Dancing at second is Gunther. Rolled out to the first baseman Webb. He'll scoop, he'll run, he'll get the out. But it is the two out, two run double by Garrett Gunther that stretched this lead after three, Grays Lake Central, three to nothing over Evingham. Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the stage. In the pool. On the field. 
Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! Today's game is available for download. Click the digital copy button under the event video player to download a digital copy of this event right to your computer. Today's game is also available for all subscribers via the NFHS Network Live mobile app for Apple and Android devices. Download the app from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store today to start watching live games wherever you are. Well, the time is now. Reaching midway point of the game here for Effingham. 2-3-4, Coberlin, Raditz, and Hull. Coberlin struck out the first time against Schufreiter. Schufreiter starts him out with the breaking ball in the inside corner. Effingham still searching for their first hit, and they need it early on in an inning to get some kind of offense going. Really good, hard. Downward trajectory breaking, breaking ball right there. Now Coberline faces the 0 2 count. Not sure what he's going to be seeing next. Only one base runner around by Schufreiter. That was a two out error in the first inning. Goes fastball right there on the edge. Slow, slow, fast. One out. Well, Schufreiter was an All Stater last year. We'll see if those plaudits come again. Go to College of Lake County. He'll throw a four seam fastball, a two seam fastball, a curveball, and a change. So, four different pitches for the young man. His dad, Bill, one of the assistant coaches, coaches first base for Grays Lake Central. Camden Raditz, he was the one player that's reached on an error in the first inning. Shoot rider 19 and 2 the last two seasons. So you give him the ball, tell him go 60 feet, 6 inches of home plate, and you feel pretty good, don't you? <laughs> it's a dream for Will Schufreiter to be here. Actually, it was specifically a dream for here, him in his freshman year. Will had a dream that he'd pitch in the sectional championship game on his home field in his senior year. And guess what happened? He pitched on his home field, the sectional championship game, his senior year, and he just has his second strikeout of the inning, the fourth of the game. See, and he's getting swings. That, that ball dipped down and out of the zone. And Raddus tells Hull as he crosses his teammate, that ball is really going down. That, that thing dropped off a table, probably 14 inches vertical drop very, very late. Hull was a strikeout victim in the first inning. Comes fastball and misses 2-0. Oh. They started changeup, then he went fastball. Changeup very effective right-hander to left-hander because it runs away from him a bit. He's been ahead on the count the entire morning. Hull hits this one hard to left field. Gerbasi gives a little ground, and that's another quick inning for Effingham. Halfway home in this one, it's a three to nothing lead for Grays Lake Central, bidding for the first the title game appearance in baseball Chick history. Are you looking to enjoy some Chick-fil-A after the big game? Head to your local Chick-fil-A restaurant and use the mobile app for easy order.
back at Dooley Health and Care Field in Joliet. And the pitching change made by head coach Kern McNeely for the Flaming Hearts. They'll bring their center fielder, Crest Hull, in from center fielder and put him on the mound. The 6'1", 170 pound senior has only appeared in, this would be his eighth game on the hill, just 15 innings pitched. He's allowed a relatively high 18 hits, but he has been powerful. We talked about his arm, 22 strikeouts in those 15 innings, just 11 walks and a relatively high 4.67 earned run average. Defensive manipulations now for Effingham. Caden Nichols will go from pitching to left field. That will push Caden Koberline to center field to take the place of Quest Hull. First batter Hull will face will be Nolan Mousset. He's the designated hitter batting for Schuff Rider. Then Cooper. Sam Cooper and Parker Greenfield. This is 7-8-9 in the order for the Rams from Grays Lake Central coming into this game, a 32-7 record. Well, this is an absolute shutdown inning for Quest Hull and the Effingham Flaming Hearts. They cannot chase anymore, especially the way Schoof Rider is pitching for Grays Lake Central. Mousset struck out against Nichols his first time up. Well, if we said last inning for Effingham was time to really get the bats moving, this is definitely a hold -em inning for the Flaming Hearts. Hull pops the mitt for Miles Maxiden. Next pitch, down and away, yet another walk. That was Sam Cooper at the plate, we should say. Last out of the last inning was Mousset. So Cooper draws a walk, and that is now the third inning out of four that Grays Lake Central has either been hit by a pitch or walked to open up an inning. So we talked about the plate discipline of the Rams, and they've exhibited it right there. Another leadoff opportunity. Now they got a right-hander on the hill to try to run against. Parker Greenfield showed bunt, pulled it back, snap throw to first. <laughs> Diving back safely is Cooper. Maxson has already thrown out one runner trying to steal. I look to get a pickoff there. Parker Greenfield will go to Buena Vista. Outfield playing very deep. And usually if it's a bunt situation, the outfield will come in to be a backup situation on any kind of throw to either first or second base. And Greenfield will pull it back again. Third baseman Evan Weymouth had been playing in. Charged on that bunt attempt. It's 2-0. and oh. Trying to set it up for the top of the order. Troy Whalen. He just flat out pointed at Parker Greenfield. Get it down right here. <laughs> I love it. There's not a secret right now, just execution. Didn't get a chance on that pitch. It's 3-0. and And we mentioned for Hull, he's got the great arm, but just 15 innings pitched, 11 base on balls, and now 12. So if there's been an issue with the fine center fielder, when he moves to the hill, it's command of his strike zone. Pours a fastball in there. It's three and one. Well, he's running up there in the mid to high 80s, though. So no yeah, doubt. it was getting there. <laughs> Could hear that pop from Maxton's glove. Back to back walks open up the bottom of the fourth inning. Eight, nine hitters in the order. Talk about setting a table. Well, Effingham pitchers have allowed six base on balls and two hit batsmen already in this game. 
I believe that is Brandon Kirkner running down at first base. And I'll correct myself, there's six overall free runners, four base on balls, two hit batsmen, but six what I call free base opportunities for their opponent. Runners first and second at the plate. It's Jack Gerbasi, not an official at bat today. He's been hit by a pitch, walked, he scored a run. Uh, he showed bunt, but I think that was a straight take the whole way as well, because that ball was down in a good bunt, good pitch to bunt for him, but he went ahead and took it. One ball, one strike. First baseman Webb charging. Gerbasi can bump this ball down the third base line. He not only would advance the runners, but his speed could maybe get himself a hit as well. He is putting it down. That may stay fair. Rolling, rolling, fair ball, bunt single. Jack Gerbasi. We talked about it. He executed it, no doubt about that. Evan Weymouth was staying back. He basically showed us. He showed Gervasi. Gervasi on the line or foul. He put that thing about six inches right inside of the white stripe. A big inning without the ball going, what, more than 40 feet. Two walks and a bunt. Infield is in for Luke Mudd at the plate. Hull on in relief. Two walks and a bunt single. Mud, 354 average this year, 21 runs batted in. You got bases loaded, you got two, three, four coming up. It's a dream situation for Grays Lake. Cooper at third. Courtesy runner Brendan Kirkner at second. Gerbasi at first. This one is ripped. It will get down. It will score at least two. Cooper is in. Two run double from Luke Mudd. He hit that ball hard in the left center field. Hayden Coberland was able to cut it off. And we're last inning, we saw Troy Whalen wave the runner home with two outs in that same situation. This time he holds his runner knowing there's nobody out and they have a chance to bust this game wide open here in the bottom of inning number four. Five to nothing, still runners second and third and no one out. Adam Fitzgerald walked and scored last inning. He singled in the first. The infield is still in. Big cut from Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald looking to drive in runs. That ball was above his hands. He just couldn't get the barrel on top of it. But I just, I do, I like his aggressiveness there. With first base open, he really doesn't need or want to walk. He wants to hit the ball hard with the infield in and drive in these two runs. Grays Lake Central scored two runs in each of the last two innings. They're still working on building this one. Two balls, one strike to Fitzgerald. Rogers on deck. Now the second baseman, Raditz, has to retreat because he was playing in, makes the catch. The runner at third had gone a long way down the line. Gerbasi, though, is able to get back safely. Nice job by Camden Raditz. Raditz was playing in where the green meets the brown on this turf field. Had a long ways to go, drop step to his left leg, went to the spot the ball was going to come down, and then had the presence of mind to throw it back in quickly to third base, but a really solid catch to hold this thing manageable at this point. Cleanup hitter Chris Rogers will step in with runners second and third. The 
pitch from Hull. 2-0, first base is open. Troy Worthen gave a little signals of a box, making a box with his hands, meaning, yes, you're here to drive in the run, but make sure it's right in your zone. That's a call strike, but it was not in Rogers' zone. Yeah, that was a pitcher's pitch. And Rogers, being the great hitter and he is, he said, okay, I'm going to get a good one before this is all said and done. Got a pretty good one there. Bounced out to the shortstop, Harper. Harper comes home. The tag applied. And he's gone. Good job from Jack Harper to Miles Maxiden to cut down Jabasi at the plate. Maxiden with a really good tie. Got that down there in a hurry. Yes, contact play was on. I like that aggressiveness. High school baseball, you have set up first and third. You have an offensive weapon on the bases. Two runs have crossed the plate, but Hull may be able to get out of this one if he can get past Riley Pollock. Rogers, the lead at first. First pitch swinging. Foul ball, right field side, and out of play. Pollock has already driven in a run today. He's scored one as well. Twenty-three RBIs on the season, looking for twenty-four, which would extend this lead and create even more separation. Mud the lead from third. Rogers from first. Pollock looks to be headed to the right field gap. He found it. Scoring easily is Mudd. Cruising into third is Rogers. An RBI single for Riley Pollock in a six to nothing lead. Big two out hit. They've had a couple of them in this baseball game. Three of their six or four of their six runs have come with two outs. Really good aggressive baseball team. They've done a good job on the base. They've done a good job taking Free pass, and they did a great job hitting the ball the other way. They've had a complete baseball game, both offensively and defensively, thus far. Three runs have crossed the plate. Two hits in the inning. Garrett Gunther with two big RBIs, last inning on a double. And a long inning for Quest Hall, who came on in relief. Yeah, it's been a laborious inning for him. And every pitch has been a pressure pitch and pressure situation. Started his own problem with a leadoff walk. Ralph DeLeon swinging a bat on deck for Grays Lake Central. That's the DH spot. And sometimes a pitcher home plate seems like it's 25 inches wide, and sometimes it seems like it's seven inches wide. A couple of hops out to Raditz. He'll scoop over to first base, and that will close out the inning. However, three run score, a couple of hits, throw in two walks, and the lead has expanded after four, six to nothing, Grays Lake Central. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. Yeah. This is 
Back in Joliet, it is cruise time here for Rays Lake Central halfway through this one. Six to nothing lead. They've scored in one in the first, two in the third, four, or three in the fourth. Meanwhile, Will Schufreiter has only allowed one base runner to the Uppingham Flaming Hearts. We talked about Effingham, only one trophy, none in baseball coming in. They've had some big league guys go through. Glenn Bummer, the 72 Effingham team, played for the Cards and Rangers. Ryan Schaus, you and I remember that name in the mid-80s. Played for five different teams. Chad Green, currently with the Blue Jays. And Nick Gardwine, a 12 graduate, played with the Rangers. So they've had some big league guys go through Effingham. Starting the fifth inning, leading it off will be Miles Maxiden for Effingham. High school sports fans never miss another game. Become a subscriber to the NFHS network to watch live event coverage, game replays, and highlights from high school sporting events from across the country. Millions of athletes, thousands of games, one destination. NFHSnetwork.com. We are high school. Double barrel activity down the right field line for the Flaming Hearts. Jack Harper is warming up as well as Cameron Raditz. Maxiden waves through that pitch. He was robbed his first time up by full length diving catch by left fielder Jack Gerbasi. That ball was headed to the gap, would have rolled to the wall. Gerbasi though denied Maxiden and Maxiden will not be denied here. Hit by a pitch. Only the second base runner allowed today by Schufrider. Yeah, Schufrider has been spot on all day long. See if Effingham can get Schufrider out of his rhythm now with a run on base. Courtesy runner coming in appears to be Ethan Jones running for the catcher Maxiden. You know, we, we're not privy to this information but mentioned Jim Maxson was the basketball coach when they went to the state tournament. That's got to be a relative, right? <laughs> In the town of Effingham? Yep. Fly ball, short right center field, second baseman, Gunther will make the catch off of the bat of Colton Webb. Good job by Schuprider coming right back. He hits the man, only a second base runner allowed, and boom, he Attacks the zone, pounds the ball with, on the first pitch. And first pitch hunting, Webb just got underneath it, dropped his hands, and the ball went straight up off his bat. Wide open stance from Evan Weymouth. That's an exaggerated wide open stance. See those stirrups all the way up to his knees. Interesting stance in that he starts open, steps open a little more, but then, what, probably about 80% of his weight on his back leg. Transfers to his back leg, yep. In the open stance, some people believe it, you know, two things. One, allows you to track the ball better, but secondly, it's a timing when he steps back into the box. Couldn't pull the trigger there. Quick at bat, another strikeout for Schufreiter. That is his fifth of the day. To the number eight hitter in Spencer Fox. Fox bounced out to first to lead off the third inning. He goes after the first pitch and fouls it away. Talked about Schufrider being all state last year unbeaten, so he's got over 130 strikeouts the last last two years. That makes your defense better, right? <laughs> It's always interesting, you know, and you look and you say, well, gosh, these guys are playing defense in a 965 clip, and then yeah. you look and there's a pitcher that strikes out to an inning. Yeah. Not a lot of tough plays to make there. Outs are outs. There's a breaking ball right there. Oh, he is coming at Effingham with everything. You better not be guessing up there. Straight over the top. Strikeout number six. 
So the leadoff batter reaches on a hit by pitch, but then it's one, two, three, through five. Six to nothing, Grays Lake Central. Watching live coverage of the IHSA Baseball Championships on the NFHS Network. NFHSnetwork.com slash IHSA is your destination for the most comprehensive coverage of Illinois high school playoff action. And boy, do we have action for you today. We're in our first semifinal of the day. Coming up next in Class 3A, it'll be Sycamore taking on the defending state champs, the Roadrunners from Nazareth Academy. Then we go into 4A. Our first game will feature the 4A defending champions. That's Edwardsville. They will be taking on York. And then we'll round out the day, Brother Rice and Nutrier. And we have a pinch here to start things off here in the bottom of the fifth inning. He was on deck last inning. So Ralph DeLeon will assume the designated hitter duties for Grays Lake Central. 243 hitter on the season. One double, he got three triples, so he finds a gap. He can run. Quest Hull delivers his first pitch, gave up three runs last inning. The only inning that the Rams did not score was in the second. Two out walk, and then a caught stealing. Made it in effect a 1-2-3 inning. A quest told the previous pitch, threw a breaking ball for a strike, and with his fastball, if he has command of that breaking ball, he will be difficult to hit, but last inning, Ram hitter just sat dead red on his fastball. Count two and two. Number two, Quest Hull on the mound for the Flaming Hearts from Effingham. Season record of 22 and 15. You know, and that is interesting about this year's entire field in that there are no records that just, you know, 38 and one, nothing like that. These teams have all played tough competition so you're going to pick up a few losses along the way. DeLeo looks at a breaking ball for strike three. Yeah, there's so much in baseball in regards to rainouts and, you know, games that you might play three times a week and the next week you might play six and your pitching depth is challenged. A lot of times you might want to get somebody different in the lineup, so there's not too many gaudy records in the game of baseball. You know, the one that jumps out at me, Last year, last week, right, Father McGivney was 35 and 1 when mm -hmm. they lost the Super Sectional. That record really jumped out at you out of Springfield. Jordan Dumas will pinch hit for Sam Cooper. As Troy Whalen getting a few extra people at bats here. You know, and not, not just like, okay, we have a 6 nothing, and let's just give anybody a bet. But feeling you may be playing tomorrow for a state championship, you'd like to get some guys out there, much like in basketball, right? You, you want to get some people out there early in a game so you just get the feel of what the environment's like. Yeah, get your feet wet. We used to try to get our players, just get some action, get some activity, feel like you're a part of things. And he's going to get a base hit. Jordan Dumas goes right field. Well, he came in 286, so he can handle a bat. That was not, as you mentioned, it wasn't just a courtesy. It was 
and that bat that they thought Dumas could do some good things for them. He came in on the season with well, that's his seventeenth hit, so he's been there and done that, and he's a threat to run as well. Dumas the lead at first. Home misses. First base coach Tony Ticci, been the Grays Lake since staff since 2009, but former head coach at Niles North. So you got a former head coach with a chance to bring you some stability. And they did that 14 years ago and it's been a nice coaching pair of the last couple or last 14 years for Grays Lake Central. Our third pinch hitter of the inning, Cam Marson. Hitting in the ninth spot for Parker Greenfield. All struggling to find a strike zone for Marson. He comes in with 16 hits. So these guys have, have been around the game, had other opportunities, and that Troy Whalen, he has keep guys sharp, right? Get them ready for action. Infield a double play tip to the middle. Here goes Dumas. Ball four. Runners first and second with one out. Fifth base on balls allowed by the Flaming Hearts. Good plate discipline by Grays Lake Central. Now we have a runner in. That's Brendan Kirkner running at first base. Brendan Kirkner. This is a catcher spot in the order, and Kirkner ran last time for Greenfield. So they're going to take the ball from Quest Hall. Grays Lake Central headed to the top of their order. And applause from the Effingham side of the field. So Hall will head back out to the outfield. Andrew Donaldson will take the ball. He'll get his warm-up tosses in. Andrew Donaldson. Right-hander, 6'1", 160, a senior. Comes in one and one on the season. 22 innings pitched, relatively high, 27 hits allowed. 19 strikeouts against 12 base on balls. And an earned runners of 5.4. One for the senior right-hander. Third pitcher of the game used by Effingham. That was one of the challenges coming into this tournament, the pitching depth for the Flaming Hearts. We will see Josh McDevitt yes. tomorrow. He's the ace of the staff. Of course, pitching count limits in effect and super sectional Monday, just not enough days of rest. Yeah, McDevitt threw a shutout 4 nothing in the super sectional. He did that on just 85 pitches. How efficient is that? He'll touch 94 or 95, but he won't do that until tomorrow. So the outfield is reset to the way it was at the beginning of the game. That's Coberline in left, Hull in center, and Fox in right. Nichols comes out of the game. He started the game in the mound, went to left field, and Andrew Donaldson steps in. First batter he faces, not an easy task, Jack Gervasi. One out in the inning. Rams have put pressure on all day. Gerbasi a little inside out to the right fielder Fox. And that will be the second out of the inning. Got that ball right on Gerbasi's hands. He couldn't extend it all. 
probably a little bit frustrated with the pitch in on his hands. He did not need to chase. Last time Luke Mudd came to the plate, he doubled in a couple of runs. That was just one inning ago. Two runners on. No runs are in. Here in the fifth. Mudd takes away. Dumas at second. Curtis to runner Kirkner is at first. Big hole on the right side once again. Raddish tries to cover it up now, getting back in position. Ground ball through the hole between short and third. Dumas being waved around. Headed to third is Kirkner. He's going to be waved all the way. A little mishandling in the outfield. Two more runs in for the Rams. It's eight to nothing. Boy, that ball was hit right on the button. Jack Harper, not a chance. Ball split between Coberlein and Quest. And a little bit of the ball hit the ground a second time. Troy Whalen waving. I love watching Troy Whalen. You see him waving the guys. It's not his left hand. He's waving with both hands. <laughs> and they busted this one wide open, taking advantage of some two out hits. Dave, I'd have to go back, but I think six of their eight runs now are with two outs on this game. And we've talked about they've had five base on balls accepted, two hit batsmen. They've taken advantage of all those opportunities. Adam Fitzgerald at the plate. He's looking for one more, at least one more this inning. Fitzgerald one for two. He walked and scored in the third. Fouls that one straight back. Third batter, and Andrew Donaldson is faced. And this is what happens when you have hitters up and down your lineup. There is just no, no let up. Fitzgerald ropes this one to left. Two hops to the left fielder, Coberline. Being waved on, no throw. Luke Mudd scores the ninth run of the game. RBI, Adam Fitzgerald. Boy, the hit parade continues. That ball was scalded. It went, it was tomahawked. Got quickly into left field with two outs. Runner on the move was Mudd. He's got great speed anyway. And don't look now, but one more run, and we would, we'd be calling the books on this game. 9 nothing. bottom of the fifth. Chris Rogers will go gap hunting here. Cleanup hitter for the Rams. A 10-run rule in effect all throughout the state tournament. Only one look at the scoreboard here in left field at Dooley Health and Care Field. A lot of crooked numbers for Grays Lake Central. One run in the first, nothing in the second, then two, three, and three in the last three innings. Nazareth Roadrunners on the right field line. They're staying in the shade. And Sycamore Spartans out doing their stretching out in left field. Good hack from Rogers. Remember this inning started with Ralph DeLeon striking out looking. And then in a string of three straight pinch hitters after DeLeon's pinch hit, Dumas and Marson both reached single and walk respectively. Slow curveball and called strike three. Rodgers will go down looking, but three more cross the plate. Three runs, three hits. Nine, nothing, Rams. We're all familiar with the three what's. What is it? What can it do for me and what does it cost? At Country Financial, we can help you.
tell you he's got it. We're in downtown Joliet. Well, that building you see in the right field side, deep beyond the right field wall, that is Joliet Central High School. That is one of two high schools here in Joliet, Joliet Central, Joliet West. That was Joliet Township. It officially, it still is Joliet Township High School. Limestone, it's one of the historical architectural buildings in Illinois. Yeah, that is one big high school building. Joliet Steelman, right? Yep. Leaking it off, it will be the number nine spot in the order. That is Caden Nichols to lead it off over one today. Will Schroofreiter is not allowed a hit. That one somehow snuck through the catcher Parker Greenfield. That could be Marson back there right now. Marson pinch hit for Greenfield. Schroofreiter has only thrown 53. That's pitch number 54 on the morning. So he's been very efficient until then. That is his first walk of the day to go along with six strikeouts. The other two base runners to reach have reached on an error and a hit by pitch. We'll go to the top of the order in Jack Harper. He's grounded out to the right side twice. 50 pitches through five innings, though. That is extremely solid pitching. A good timeout by Parker Greenfield. How about that? And a good timeout by Coach Whalen as well. He's got somebody warming up in the pen right now, but he's trying to try to buy a little bit of time. Remember, discover the career for you. Today's game is available for download. Click the digital copy button under the event video player to download a digital copy of the event right to your computer. Today's game is also available for all subscribers via the NFHS Network Live mobile app for Apple and Android devices. Download the app from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store today to start watching live games wherever you are. Colin Cornett warming up down the left field line for Gray's Lake. But of only 54 pitches, and you can't save him for tomorrow, so you'd probably let Shoot Rider battle his way through this. Well, not having allowed a hit. Yes. Good cut by Harper. That's the best swing that Effingham has had today against Schufrider. Yeah, that's fouled straight back. That means that Harper's timing was good. Hitting is about timing. Pitching is about disrupting timing. So you'll probably have something off speed here. Watch for a straight change. It's missed on the outside. And that's what it was. Good change. It's about 9 to 11 miles off the fastball. Three balls and a strike. Harper, the leadoff hitter, to be followed in the order by Coberline and Raditz. And that's called strike. Didn't quite stick in catcher's mitt. This hit to the right side. Gunther. So that advances the runner to second. Really nice range by Garrett Gunther on that particular play. Went far to his left. He was actually up the middle just a little bit because of double play depth with a man on first, but he ranged far to his left. Now he's looking at a card of Garrett Gunther, and normally it's okay. That's a scouting report. I don't know how much advanced scouting that you can do, maybe one game or what have you. You know, Grays Lake and uh, Effingham, quite a bit of distance away from each other. This ball is ripped, and there is the first hit of the day for Effingham. And that hit by Coberline will score Effingham's first run of the day. It is nine to one. That ball got up in the zone. Coberline was right on it, turned it over to left field. Good piece of hitting. RBI and on the board right now, the Flaming Hearts. And that will bring up Camden Raditz. Reached on an air and struck out. Oh 
Big swing from Reddick. Well, that was nasty. He's throwing some really good breaking balls. That was one of the top two or three of the morning. That one was straight down. He can miss some bats. Little number in front of the plate. Shoof rider out. Catcher out. 2 3 on the put out. Advances cover line to second. How about Parker Greenfield, the catcher, like a cat, got up out of his stance. Here came his pitcher, Shoof rider. He was going to make the play, but the catcher calls him off. Good 2 3 put out, throwing a seed down to first base. Excellent defensive play by catcher Parker Greenfield. Questo will look to plate another run. Schufreiter not quite as sharp with his location as he had been earlier today. Well, lost just a little bit, which actually, again, is somewhat surprising. He's still in the mid to low 60s on his pitch count for the day. Well, in the age of pitch counts, to be in the mid 60s with two outs into sixth inning is amazing. Yeah, especially when you have six strikeouts. Three and zero to Hull. Now three and one. Yeah, he's probably thrown 20 pitches this inning after 50 coming in. The first five. High to left field, giving Chase Gerbasi towards the bullpen, and it lands in the bullpen. That's a tough area to get to because you have the elevated mounds through there. You have the fence closing quickly, and you have what? One, two, three, four, five of your teammates hanging around down there. So Hull will get another chance. And could not find a zone on that one. Second walk of the inning. Second walk of the game for Will Schufreiter. And that should be it here for Schufreiter. He gave up the hit. He struggled a little bit, and now the Grays Lake Central fans will come to their feet. Entire team gathered around the mound. And they do indeed take the ball from him. A nice round of applause. And a tip of the cap. Well deserved as his team is in full command. The Potter is a 5 0 as he threw up the first five innings. Six strikeouts, one hit allowed for Schroof Ryder. Two runners on base are his responsibility. I think that's Dumas that took the ball. It is. 5'11", 158-pound senior. We saw him in before on offense. He's 2-0, 2.47 earned run average in 17 inning pitch. 18 strikeouts in those 17 innings, so he can punch out. Hey, remember, fans, Bloomington High School football player Malik Helms is the reason he's. A little side winding action. Drops down what? Not three quarters, drops down all the way to a sidearm, almost submarine situation. So very difficult against right handed hitters, he would be. Now beyond the left field wall, it, I don't know if I've seen this before. You know, all our state tournament games, there is room to kind of get loosened up. So there's a, well, let's see, half a dozen, maybe a little bit more players taking some dry swings with the bats. Other t players, and this is for Sycamore, just leaning over the left field fence, just spectators. Nazareth Academy, defending state champs, underneath the shade tree. 
<laughs> down on the berm on the right yep. field side. A little bit of different ways getting ready. Miles Maxidin be the first man to face Fikret Dermis. Side armor. This is just a little bit outside. Well, you're a right-handed hitter. You really have to stay in, stay in, stay in, and think middle opposite. Got to pepper that ball through the right side. Check the swing right into the screen. You don't see too many guys coming at you like this in high school with some velocity on it. Two outs here in the top of the sixth. That one he just blew right by Maxident. Fitzgerald leave a lot of room down the right field line. If Maxi could go there. Tapper to third base, foul. Took a little off that, got it inside. That's what, probably 80, 90 feet between Fitzgerald and the right field line. Check swing and misses the count. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Ram dugout was ready to hop over and greet their pitcher at the mound, but <laughs> the right arm of Ryan Verber did not go up on that ball just a bit outside. Max in a chopper off the plate. Dermis the throw to first. And that will retire the side. So Fickrick Dermis comes on and does his job. However, the Flaming Hearts strike for a run. They get it by way of an RBI single from Caden Coberline. We'll head to the bottom of the six. Grays like to bat with an eight-run lead. Academy Sports and Outdoors has something for everyone in your family. From top sports brands to backyard cooking or the best in the outdoors, the North Face, Yeti, Columbia, or Magellan Outdoors, Academy has it all. Whether you're celebrating familiar traditions or exploring new ones, we've got what you need in here to have fun out there. Start your next adventure and make lifelong family memories at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Download our app or shop at academy.com. Trying to figure out the defensive movements here for the Effingham Flaming Hearts. We do have a new pitcher. We can tell you that much. He came from shortstop. That is Jack Harper. Jack Harper, again, was at shortstop. He's a senior. This is his 10th game on the bump. One-on-one -on -one record, 11 innings. So he's been used, obviously, all in relief. 15 strikeouts in those 11 innings compared to Six base on ball, so three to one ratio there, and a solid earned run average of 1.91 for Jack Harper. All right, I will tell you that Caden Coberline is in center field. Caden Nichols back into one, left. Jack Harper now pitching for Effingham. Number two, West Hall, now a shortstop for Effingham. And there you can hear the changes in the background and Harper will come on, and the first man he will face will be Riley Pollock, who's driven in two runs today, has a couple of hits, scored a run. So we've heard the you know the game musical chairs. It's been musical movement of players here for Effingham, trying to fit all the pieces of the puzzle together.
Pollock to be followed by Gunther, and, and we'll see who hits in that DH roll and first pitch. Riley Pollock will be hit by a pitch, and that is actually how Grays Lake Central started the game today on their offensive side with hit batter, and that's how they scored their first runner. Jack Trabassi was hit by the pitch, came in to score the first one. Here's Garrett Gunther. He had a big, big two out double, scored a couple of runs back in the third. That stretched a one nothing lead to three to nothing. Rams have found caps three different times today and have lived on two out RBI hits in this baseball game. Reaching out, poking it up into the infield. The pitcher, who had just been the shortstop, Jack Harper, makes the call on the catch. Wind picking up, left center field blowing in, and you can now hear it in our crowd mic, so we'll follow that just a bit and see if that's going to become a factor here late in this game, and then throughout the day today, we're going to hold balls up into center field and completely all three positions of the outfield. Ralph DeLeon will hit for the second time. He struck out looking his first time up. Follow this one away to the right side. Winner of this game will play for the state championship in Class 3A tomorrow. And that will be approximately 11.30 or so. 11 o'clock, 11.30 will follow the third place game that begins at 9. IHSA with 10 o'clock starts their state tournament series in baseball on Fridays. 9 o'clock on Saturday, they built in some time for award ceremonies that take place on Saturday's final day of IHSA action tomorrow. De Leon waved at and missed once the ball was in the dirt. Riley Pollock saw an opportunity to take second. So De Leon goes down swinging this time, second strikeout for him today. Pinch hitter, I believe. Caden Woods. Woods batting. Junior backup shortstop. Five hits on the year coming in. So he's had a few plate appearances. Got out in front of that one, didn't he? Really good pitch by Harper. Big roster for Grays Lake Central, as it is for everybody that comes here. Effingham not quite as large, but so many players are getting in for the Rams today. This one is hit hard to center field. Cobra line will cruise over and make the catch, and that will close out the inning. Only the second time today that Grays Lake Central has not scored. However, they are three outs away from playing in its first state baseball championship. We'll go to the seventh and a nine to one lead. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends, how to fit in, how to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 12 million participants in America who take part in high school sports or activities. Task ahead of Effingham here, chasing eight. We'll have to do with Colton Webb, Evan Weymouth, and Spencer Fox. They're the hitters due up. Cal Hansen in at first base now for Grays Lake. 88. Now at third base for 
for Grays Lake Central, number five, Jerry Miller. Here, defensive changes. Jerry Miller at third for Grays Lake Central. Colton Webb to lead things off. Cal Hansen over at first. So when this game's over, I have to count off how many different players that Troy Whalen has been able to get into this ball game. You know, and that obviously with the lead, here's a base hit. Going the opposite way is Colton Webb. That's only the second hit of the day for Effingham. Now you can see a con conscious effort by Troy Whalen to try to get people, different people, opportunities. Looks like we will get maybe a pinch runner here for Effingham. It'll be Ethan Jones, number 11 for the Flaming Hearts will be running at first base, Jones. Jones was a courtesy runner earlier in the game. So now he is officially in the game and if it would come around for courtesy situation, Jones would now be in eligible. I thought you were going to say if it would come around as in the lineup coming yes. around, <laughs> then it would be a decision to make yeah, for That's uh, true too, yep. That would be good news for Effingham fans. Line drive, chance to double runner off first. He still gets the bag. <laughs> so Hansen had to make a great catch to get there and then beat the runner back to the bag, Ethan Jones, and that is a quick, quick double play. Well, that was a line drive and plenty of time for the double play. He hurried the throw, but they get the DP anyway, they're one out away. We may get a pitching change here just to get a little more action. Yep, we're gonna have a pitching change for Grace Lake Central. They're gonna bring in Max Wall, a 5'7 senior. Yes, they are gonna get the senior in his 11th ball game of the year. He's 2-0, 1.33 earned run average, 25 strikeouts in 21 innings pitched, and the senior gets on the hill. And what you've done right now, if you're Troy Whalen, you've done a couple things. One, you've gotten numerous people in this baseball game. Two, from a coaching standpoint, fan standpoint, you've gotten a lot of people opportunities to get in the state tournament. And three, as you mentioned earlier in the ball game, you know, anything that would be quote unquote nervousness of a state tournament, all these guys have now been in if they're needed tomorrow in a game situation. Well, how about you? You've coached in uh, multiple state final, state championship games. You don't necessarily go into a state tournament thinking, okay, how can I get everybody in the game? But do you think about it a little bit? I think you absolutely do. And and uh, especially when you have a nine run lead like they once had nine nothing. And I know you've heard this before, but we had a semifinal game where we had a sophomore that had zero at bats. And he ended up getting a game winning hit in the bottom of the seventh inning to walk off. And my point is you never know you know, when when things might happen to turn over a lineup or an injury or a pinch running situation, what have you, that who might get in the game. So if you're gonna get garner any experience, it will help your players be ready for the task at hand. With nobody on base and Max Wall on the mound, Spencer Fox will bat with two outs. And the Grays Lake Central fans, students, fans on their feet. Fox puts a charge into this one. Drives Gerbasi deep, deep. Gerbasi lays out, can't get it. One hop off that left field wall. Spencer Fox not ready to end this game quite yet. Spencer Fox hit that ball, what, about 345, 350 feet. One hop the wall. That's the longest ball we've had hit today here at Dooley Health and Care Field. That ball was driven. Quality at bat. Number nine hitter in the order, Caden Nichols. He walked last inning, scored Effingham's only run. Nichols going after the first pitch. Jabasi going to get another chance. Twisting into foul territory, and he will make the catch, and Grays Lake Central will play for a state championship tomorrow morning. A 
nine hit attack for Grays Lake Central, scoring in every inning but two. Pitchers allowing only three hits and one run. And for the first time since 2014, Grays Lake Central is in the state baseball finals, but in the 20 year history of baseball, first time they will play for a state championship. It will be class 3A tomorrow morning. Complete game, they have nine runs on nine hits. They had two RBI hits. They played solid defense throughout. They got solid pitching. There's two out hits. They took advantage of some free gifts based on balls and hit batsmen. And they found themselves very worthy of a semifinal victory that catapults them into the title game tomorrow. They will take a 33 and seven record either against either Sycamore making its first appearance ever in the state baseball finals or Nazareth Academy, your defending class 3A champs. But today in this semifinal, your final score, Rays Lake Central nine, Effingham one. For Mark Lindo, I'm Dave Bernhardt. Three more games coming your way on the NFHS network from the IHSA semifinals here on Friday.